Hey there, Cycle Card fans and other gawkers. Uh, we're back at the uh, we're back at the shop with the Vulture, the W154, uh, a replica of a Mercedes. You've seen this before, I'm sure. And it's my cycle card, and I'm working on it today. So I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to uh, not only show you what I'm doing, uh, but also have a little bit of a talk about what this thing is. I'm wearing the ridiculous GoPro camera. Kind of feels like, uh, remember those old Saturday Night Live skits where uh, they had the Russian talk show and the guy was just wearing this giant microphone because they couldn't make it any smaller? Kind of feels like that. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm building the new drive system for this thing. I got kind of involved in setting up the brake uh, caliper and making all that sort of nice and straight after it was uh, beaten half to death at Elmhurst and you can see that I'm sort of mid project here because I haven't cleaned up the bench in a little while uh, maybe someday we'll go over there and sort of show you the various plaques and whatnot that we have for the vulture but at the moment <clears throat> I'm going to do this and Sort of one of the things that uh, that people talk about a fair bit uh, when I show them the design of this thing is they ask, what is the point or is it worth it to have a rear suspension? I'll tell you, I think it's worth it. Um, and the reason I think that is because uh, when I went to my first cycle card event, it wasn't really an event. It was just kind of a bunch of guys out in the field. I had really only barely started. Uh, I really hadn't done a lot of road tests with it. I had it built. I didn't have the body on it. And I went down there to test it. And when I got in it and drove it around, it was maybe one of the most fun experiences of my life, really. Very, very, um, a lot of satisfaction from building something yourself and then going to zoom around it. And I have to say the rear suspension really gave it a... Um, a feeling of being a real car. I drove a couple of the other carts. They're very good carts and I like them a lot, but didn't really feel like a sports car. It felt a bit of a toy, to be honest. This one, when you get in it, it just it feels amazing. So I've done sort of everything I can to keep, excuse me for a second. I've done everything I can to keep uh, the rear suspension in there, uh, despite the fact that some people have definitely tried to talk me out of it. And they're probably sensible, and I'm probably not. Uh, but, you know, that's just how this rolls. So I'm, I'm crazy, and that's just how it is. Uh, so I'm keeping it. So now we're on the third redesign here, because like you saw in my last video, um, I used to have a belt drive. Then I had a shaft drive for a little while, which worked fairly well, but kind of the angle on it was weird, and it was a little bit unreliable. So. Dave Wells and I, you'll meet Dave uh, at some point later. Dave and I um, came up with this idea, which is kind of a platform that holds partly onto the rear axle and is partly sort of resting on the, on the frame. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to finish this thing up. So I need to put, what do I have left here? I need to put the mount under here and that'll be a whole project and then i need to uh, cut some of this stuff off and i need to put the chains on i need to put the gas tank back on uh, i need to cut this part off because obviously this isn't going to work way out here because the body ends like there and the wheel goes here so fair bit to do now here's what i'm doing you may have seen me set this thing up here uh, my brake caliper is installed thusly and I want to adjust the um, this pad here, it's too far that way. But the problem of course is that this is not a production vehicle and I've not left enough room to stick a wrench in there. So I'm trying to uh, very skillfully and carefully cut an allen key down so that I can slide it in here, adjust this thing, make the brake work and I'll be done with the brake disc and the caliper. I can leave that alone and I can get back to working on this stuff. 
So let's find the safety glasses. These are good ones. I don't need the cans for this. And I'm going to see if I can grind this down. You think I'll set the shop on fire? We'll soon find out. Yeah, so to the point of uh, do you need a rear suspension? No, you probably don't. Is it worth the effort? I don't know. Depends on how crazy you are and how much you like uh, to be different and how much you want your cycle car to handle in a really sort of a thrilling manner. I really wanted mine to handle well because I sort of... Ooh, look at that. That's kind of working. I sort of have designs on taking this thing. I'd love to take it on the road legally. Uh, that would be cool. Ooh, that's still hot. Um, I'd love to take it on the road legally. Uh, should I say on video that I take it on the road illegally? I don't, officially, if the OPP is watching. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I do like that uh, idea, and I think it would be a lot of fun. So, I do kind of want it to handle nicely. I know it's not a car. I know people are saying you can't expect it to be a, to be, to handle perfectly like a car. I'm not, I'm not saying perfectly, but I'm saying a rear suspension is nice. Uh, and I'm not the only one who thinks so, actually. Uh, Greg and Larry are doing their carts with a rear suspension. See, the problem with this thing, too, is that I don't know... I don't know necessarily what I'm doing. Let's, uh, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, but I think a rear suspension's a nice idea. But it's a lot of it's a lot of trouble to make it work right because obviously then your whole drive system has to be somehow modified from the original uh, simple Stevenson formula. Yeah. Gosh darn it! This thing still won't fit in there. Uh, how much can I take off of that? Like another blade width, I guess. Let's see what happens. <coughs> Okay. Well, let's see what we got here. That's about as short as it's going to get, and still be, still be a 90 degree turn. Let's see if I've gone too far or if I've got it right. Uh, I can't see anything. Um, yeah. So, do you want a rear suspension? Maybe. I think it's cool. And that kind of brings us to the to another question about... Am I still recording over here? Hi. That kind of brings us to another question regarding... What is a cycle cart? Like, what are the defining characteristics? When can you not call it a cycle cart anymore? This isn't going to work, apparently. When can you not call it a cycle cart? Like, obviously, you know, some people are doing some interesting things. Like, they're putting... Oops, that's hot. They're putting uh, they're putting gearboxes in there and all manner of things, and so people are saying, well, when is it a cycle card? You have to use the 17-inch wheels. Do you have to uh, stick to the dimensions? Does it absolutely have to be 40 inches wide? Does the wheelbase absolutely have to adhere to the Gitra V uh, specs? My opinion on that is that no, it does not. I think the important things, this is not working. I think the important things are, uh, the important things 
in my opinion, are the torque converter, this, the Comet uh, variable clutch, whatever that thing's called, the 200cc motor, and spoked wheels. Spoked wheels are those things, obviously. Uh, those are the important characteristics, in my opinion, of a cycle cart. Uh, and why? Why is that? Because it seems like you can't really, um, you can't really force a lot of speed and a lot of power through this thing. You can do a lot of things to your engine, and I've seen some people modify theirs and whatever. Maybe they're quick, but I don't think you can really. Uh, the performance is dampened. Let's put it that way by the torque converter, which is a good thing because you don't really want to have everybody out there running crazy stuff. Um, so that's why it's important and the 200cc uh, engine is a good size. It goes plenty fast. Uh, I've had this thing up to 87 kilometers an hour, which is just over 50, 52, something like that. Uh, and so it's quick. Certainly if you fall off of it, it's it's very quick um so i don't think you need to bother with with uh, a lot of things besides making sure that you have those elements that's very important the torque converter the 200 cc engine the spoked wheels and you're good you can mess with other stuff for fun width is just going to add weight uh and so will length obviously and then you can do as you please. Uh, cycle cart is where you can be crazy if you want to. And this guy right here is a perfect example of that. Uh, I like to uh, experiment with this stuff. So, yeah. That's good. This is not good. This is not working at all. You know, I think I might just leave that brake caliper as it is and just see if it works. Because this is beginning to be a pain in the butt. And I kind of feel like moving on, to be honest. And it's a little rubby, I guess. But maybe that's got more to do with this one, actually. Is that still hot? Hot, hot, hot. Ah, got to get another one. Does this even work out here? No. I think I went too far with this thing. Cut it down too much. Now it doesn't fit anymore because the profile's all wrong. And I gotta get another one. I think the other one's right here. So let's maybe adjust this a hair. There we go. That's better. So maybe I'll just leave it like that. Hmm? What do you think? I think that'll probably be okay. Usually uh, the spec calls for a mechanical brake. And I just thought the mechanical brake seemed sort of a bit unreliable. Oh, look at that guy. I can tighten that up and put it just where I want it. That's great. Um, yeah, so I used a hydraulic brake. And I think I'm kind of glad I did because it stops really quite nicely. In fact, you can get a really nice... Um, into, when you go into a turn, if you hit the brakes hard, you can get the tail to swing out a little bit. Which is very, very fun. got a little bit of a rub on it. I don't think that disc is exactly straight. Also because I don't have it completely tightened. Only got it hand tight at the moment. Uh, yeah. So I think that's my take on uh, what a cycle cart should be. 
So let's continue on here. How much time have I got? Ah, we're at 20 minutes. No big deal. I would like to shove this thing just a little to the left. There we go. Lovely. See, to get it just so, it's not that easy. You really gotta have it just in the right spot. Oh, I may have nailed it. Uh, sort of. That disc is really, uh, I don't think it's flat anymore. <laughs> I don't know how much that matters, but for the moment, we're gonna say it doesn't matter at all. We're gonna continue. Of course, non-alcoholic drinks only in shop. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. Is this the right size? No, it is not. What was I working on that I needed these? It's funny. What did I need these for? I don't know. Don't know. So it goes in here. enough. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what that's from. I don't really know. Camera equipment? Question mark? Not really sure. Probably. Let's stick it over here for the time being. Yeah, so continuing on here, now that I've got that, i got to tighten those up. These are not the right size either. There we go. 13. 13, yes, correct. Yes, very good. Thirteens. I should really be doing this crossways. I'm gonna be correct about it. Can I stick that in there? No, I can't. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, something that keeps, I think, some uh, keeps a few people from building. Uh, and. Like, I call it, or I would call it, if it had a term, I would say it's shop fatigue. So, like, what am I talking about? Um, how do you keep yourself motivated? How do you keep yourself uh, from getting discouraged about how long it's taking to build your cart? And, uh, you know, how do you set a schedule if you have to? How do you keep from, how do you keep from doing it just because, oops, that's not going to hold either. How do you keep basically from making it a chore, right? You don't want to make working on your cycle car a chore because you want to be having fun, right? This is fun. Working on it's fun. Building it's fun. Driving it's fun. What helped me, this thing took me a long time to build and a long time, like eight years, I was working on it uh, in three, four different houses. And it took a long time and the way that I sort of kept myself motivated was sometimes I didn't feel like working on it I would just go out to the shop and clean the bench and put out the tools that I was gonna need to work on it the next day just get ready to work that's enough some days that's all you can manage right if you especially if you work for a living uh, you come home tired you don't really you don't you're not in the mood get out there and just get ready to work for the next day. Maybe the next day you feel better, you have a little more energy, you go out there, you do your thing. 
uh, and then the shop's already ready for you. So you don't have to put pressure on yourself to get work done. You can just clean up. Or maybe that day you just feel like um, watching some old uh, Grand Prix videos um, from the 30s. You can find those all over YouTube, right? Just do that. That's not really, you're not working on your cart, but you're keeping your inspiration up. You're kind of looking at what you're aiming at, right? You're kind of like you watch those videos, you're sort of imagining what it would be like to be one of the drivers. Um, just do anything you can to keep your to keep your motivation up and your mood up. And let me tell you something. If you haven't built one yet, or if you haven't or if you're in the midst of building one but you haven't driven it yet, I'm telling you, driving it is one of the most satisfying experiences you'll ever have in your life. I really came away from that first weekend when I drove mine just feeling, oh, it sounds corny, but almost at peace with myself. That I was able to do that and it worked and it worked beautifully and it felt great and it was really quick and a lot of fun. So that's what awaits you if you stick with it and finish. Uh, but a, a lot of work also awaits you like I'm doing right now. So uh, that's how that goes. Anyway... Uh, I suppose I should have tightened this up first because, yeah, when you tighten this up last, it never really gets tight. You know why? Because if you've tightened the brake disc up, this hub doesn't have the room to compress. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I think we're going to loosen these guys up again. Take my 13s, loosen them up. And we'll get this going again. I will try not to move the di the hub. I will try to keep it stationary so I don't have to reposition it. It doesn't have to be completely floppy loose. It just has to be loose enough to allow the hub. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work either. Loose enough to allow the hub to move just a little bit. That's really all you need. Uh, that's probably even too loose. Yeah. In case you're wondering, um, it's not too cold out here in the garage. I got the little heater system working here. Check this out. Space heater, fan, blows the warm air over here. I like it. Doesn't really work if it's, you know, minus something. Celsius, we're talking Celsius here. Doesn't really work if it's like super, super cold. But it works pretty good. Works pretty well if it's like it is today. Just above freezing. Um, and then in here, it's very nice. You know what I think we'll do? I think we will treat this with a little bit of, uh, I'd prefer blue Loctite, uh, but maybe we'll throw a little bit, no, uh, I can't get that out right now. So let's see if it just stays in there. We'll tighten this guy up. Now that we have the, now that we have the disc kind of loose, look at that, almost rolls perfectly. Yeah, the disc is a little bent. I think I may have dropped it. Or I know I dropped it. I think I may have bent it when I dropped it. What are you going to do, though? That's nice and tight. I'm not buying a new disc, that's for sure. So definitely, uh, in the comments section, Write your, uh, write your comments down. Like, what do you think a cycle cart should be? Uh, are you doing a rear suspension? Are you, uh, what's your inspiration car? How do you keep yourself motivated uh, to keep working on your cart, even though it might be tedious sometimes and difficult? How do you do that? We're all here to, we're all here to help each other, right? Cycle karting is about, uh, one of the things it's about anyway, is helping the other guy. <clears throat> That's why in the cycle cart scavenger hunt, it's worth points to build parts 
for a friend of yours. I'll talk about the cycle cart scavenger hunt in another video. It's a nice, uh, nice idea I came up with, which I like a lot. Uh, and it's a great way to do stuff without having to go to a big event. And speaking of big events, we'll be talking about that too. But that's later. So, yeah. And also, if you're inclined and you like this sort of thing, subscribe to my uh, channel and uh, hit the bell. Because apparently that's good. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a YouTube nerd much yet. But I guess I will be soon. Uh, but yeah. Subscribe and hit notifications so you can see my videos. There's going to be a few of them coming up. And uh, keep an eye out for the uh, Elmhurst Cycle Car Grand Prix 2024. And... The Cycle Cart Festival. We're working on that. So there you have it. So this is okay. I'm alright with that. That thing's got to come off. Alright. Well. Now that I've got that problem semi-solved. Let's start in on... Let me put this back in here. I have this sort of parts bin thing where I've got my like replacement parts and I got a tool box with big tools there. I have a big bin here for all your various fluids, oils, uh, got a paper towel in here. This is the stuff that I bring with me. When I take the Vulture anywhere, I bring all this stuff and it stacks nicely and it works really well. There's some bits of it over here. Uh, yeah, this is a bit of a mess. I admit it, but uh, this whole system works really well. My uh, wife and son gave me this for, was it my birthday last year? Might have been, and it works great, and I like it. Uh, okay, so now my thing is going to be, I have to get this doodad under here. And it's going to go, I think you can see, you might even be able to see from over there. When I lift up the, see how the engine is on a platform that pivots on the rear axle. You can see that when I lift it up and down. Now it's not going to pivot like this. The rear axle is going to go up and down and the engine is going to follow it. So that this uh, sprocket and that one always stay lined up because they're all in the same rigging. And of course this and this always stay lined up. So that's going to keep um, my chains running together and uh, running the rear wheels. Now, the point is, at the back of this thing, right around there, we're going to have a support. So the engine is kind of going to sit, its, its butt end is going to sit on the frame, but its front end is going to be holding on to the axle. It's the best way I can explain it. So I need something that thickness to put under there so that I can mock up the hole, drill the hole, move my um, the tongue down. The tongue is down here. I'm gonna get something to sit on here because I can't keep up that frenetic pace here without sitting down. So there's your tongue. You can see that. That's the tongue and this thing is gonna fit in between there. I can't really do that. It's going to be like that kind of, okay? That's almost just in the right spot right now. It's almost just the right thickness. It'll be good, I think, once I do it. So, uh, I don't know what that is. So, I'm hoping to drill the hole. Let's see if I can get down here lower so the camera can see this. I'm hoping to drill the hole right there in the middle, up right through this thing, right there, and that's where my bolt will sit. Now, unfortunately, this thing's not long enough, so I've got a uh, nut extension. I'm gonna have to make all that fit. It's gonna be a whole process. But, uh, you know, I think it's doable. This thing is pretty solid, actually. I was a little worried that it was gonna be a bit floppy because it's all made out of aluminum. It's solid-ish. This is the stuff where the, this is these are the cross members where the engine was sitting before, anyway, so. I'm hoping it'll uh, 
be solid enough to work regardless. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So you can see, obviously, it's a day or two later. Um, we have uh, finished a great many things here. Uh, let's see. We have got... The jack shaft is cut off. It's not sticking out here anymore. Uh, we got a couple of supports here for the backrest that are back on. Those were on there before uh, this whole system went in, but they're back on now. I'm about to chop this corner off because uh, that won't fit under the bodywork. So I've got my uh, got some rags here to keep from getting metal chunks all over everything. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to cut this thing off. We're going to use the sawzall. And yeah, this thing. So we're going to cut that off and I think that might be it for this episode. Uh, episode one of Shop Talk, where, uh, where we talk about cycle carts and uh, I take you through some of the, you know, basics on how to build them. Let me know in the comments uh, what you want for uh, future content. Put it in there. What do you want to know? Um, what are your biggest problems with building? What are your, uh, what are you most excited about to get your cycle card done? Um, if you're a person who's built a few of them, uh, maybe Dennis Thomas, um, come in here and chime in on what you think everybody else should be doing, what you would do if you had to, to do over again, what you learned, that kind of thing. Put it all down there. We're reading it. We're helping each other. This is what we do in Cycle Card. Alrighty. See you later.